Alrighty, traders. What is going on? Happy New Year. Uh, first month of 2024 is has ended. January's in the books. I'm going to film this on, what is this, February 3rd? Lovely Saturday morning for me. Um, but anyways, yeah, let's jump Let's jump right in. January, January was good, guys. I, I'm super stoked uh, with, with how I traded this month. I kind of went into the new year really wanting to avoid and not continue what I have done the, you know, the full second half of last year where I, I essentially, you know, if you watched my last video where I kind of went over my, my entire year, I'm pretty sure I mentioned, you know, I, I had made, um, was like 90% of my year in the first six months. And these last six months were just chopping around, you know, up 60 K down 30 K up 30 K down 40 K, whatever it is. Um, didn't really get anywhere, you know, um, at least in terms of the actual bottom line of my year, didn't really increase it all that much. And there were a lot of mistakes I made. And then I go through all that, that the video in detail, but when I went and started, wanting to start the new year, I said, you know, I need to be more pickier. I need to be more selective. Um, I can't just be giving back so many gains. Cause I had a lot of good big wins in those six months as well. So, um, I think I did a great job of that. And I honestly, I, I started in my old ways the first month or the first week. Uh, and I caught myself and I said, nope, this is not how we want to start the month. This is not how we want to start the year. Um, and you know, whatever I told myself and, and, and switched gears, um, it worked right. We, we have a, a we've had a great four weeks in a row. Um, you know, if you want to even add, it's technically the same week. So all healthy 20 K plus weeks since this first week. So, um, as always, we're going to jump right in to all the best worst trades and, and you'll find the same theme here that there were just a few, I would say four to five really big winners that just led to, you know, the ultimate 157 K right here. So in terms of stats, like love these stats, like finally my risk score actually looks really, really good, not only in the dollar gain range, but also in the percent wise. Um, again, if you just go back and look at some of these other six months, I mean, um, my, 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 you know, my risk reward was negative sometimes. Um, you know, it wasn't even one to one. It was worse. So really only my win rate was keeping me alive, um, which is not healthy, right? That's a very easy way to lose profitability with one, one bigger loss than expected one, you know, losing streak more than expected. And right then and there you're red. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Um, again, as always, let's go through week one. Uh, and what, what were the reasons why I ended up red that week and what, why I just didn't start the year off on a good foot. Um, for whatever reason, I wanted to start, I, I, this week, the first week I just wanted and gravitated towards gap and craps. And again, if you've watched enough of my videos, you know, I'm not really a big fan of them, not because I don't think they work. In fact, I think they work actually very well, um, with the right strategy. But for me, I've always traded them very discretionarily. Um, in many ways, I don't even say they're part of my my setups of systems or strategies because I don't take them every single time I see them. It's very discretionary. Like, oh, I kind of like this one, and I won't, I won't, I'll take it. I kind of like that, or don't like that one. And I won't take that one. And it's sometimes I don't, I don't even look for them in the morning. Like, it's just if I see it, if, if someone brings it to my attention. So it's very, it's not capturing the full edge of how they play out, which is why in my head I'm not really categorizing them as something I trade per se. But if I see one and I, for some reason, like it, will I trade it? Yes. And so for the first week here, I, for some reason, I mean, I'm just going to show you two, but, um, I think I tried like four or five and almost all of them didn't work. And so it just really led to, um, a, a redder week than it should have been had I just been more selective and frankly stuck to my true strategy, which is just don't even touch them really, uh, mo more times than not, I I'm not going to touch them. And for some reason this week, way more times, um, that I should have, I, I gravitated towards them maybe because there was nothing going on that week. The first week might've been a little slower, but, uh, the first one here is ABVC. Um, again, last, last gap and crap was amazing. Didn't take that one. Cause I was more focused on other things that were more important to me. Um, but here we go. We're gapping up and I decide, you know what? I think it's going to crap itself and let's get short. So, um, you know, ultimately, you know, you could say it did, it did close the redder for where it opened. And especially if you got short into a spike, um, uh, did I do that? No. <laughs> um, did I short the next day? No. Um, if we go into this day, what is this? The, the third, um, just, I don't even remember how I played it. Just obviously I knew I lost, I lost like four K on this ticker. Um, but yeah, I think I got stopped out here. I think I tried again, try to catch this breakdown and it spiked back or bounced back. I cut it again. And again, had you just shorted anywhere, anywhere above the open or at the open or into the, any, any form of strength, you know, yes, it did close red, which is what's important. But, um, I didn't do that. Like if we look at my, my trade here, I'll actually go to an actual screenshot. Um, yeah, got a little bit short out the open, but then took most of my size way lower, 
cut it when it broke over highs because I didn't want to lose anymore. Um, when it should do the opposite, right? Shouldn't have even probably shorted or added lower and actually looked to short here, risking maybe the pre market highs. Um, obviously, the pre market highs were a little bit higher than that, but still a, a good entry to get like, you know, the 240s, high 230s, risking, risking 260s. Um, but again, tried to reshort here, thinking it was going to break down. It did, and then caught itself and came back. So two attempts here, probably around roughly 2K each, ultimately ended down about 4,200 on the trade. Uh, so again, not a great start, but, uh, you know, that's that's not a terrible loss. Um, you know, that's just one of them. The next one is ATXI. Let's go to the daily chart real quick. Um, they did have warrants in the 30 set range, I believe. And again, last time here on the in, the, in November, I believe I actually did trade this one in November. Um, I remember I traded it pretty poorly, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then, it, you know, it gaps up again. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, a second chance. Like, here we go. I'm actually going to trade this right. Um, from my understanding, they still had more warrants to sell. You know, as you can see what happened here, um, that's not what they did. <laughs> they held 30 and actually came back. Um, and so what did I do? I took um, a very small win. Thankfully, I, I kind of was more nibble with this one where it's like, you know, if I'm going to give any gains back, um, I'm cutting for break even. You know, I, I'm not really a fan of that. I'd rather cut at a certain price because I'd rather not trade my P&L. But just to show you that just a glimpse into how this week was going just based on these two trades is that like, you know, if I took a, it was either I took like three or four losses on Gamma Craps and the one Gamma Crap I thought I was going to be right, which is ATXI here, just would not break down into the low 20s and held and then came back. And so when it came back like this, I was like, no, I'm I'm not going to turn this into like the fifth or sixth loser to, to this week. Um, I am going to be cutting it right here and now. Uh, and so I ended up making like 200 bucks. I think this early cover you know, maybe profitable. And these covers were break even. So one of those weeks for me where I just didn't, couldn't get anything going again, taking the wrong trades, uh, the more trades than not that I shouldn't have really been all that jazzed about where ended up being losers. Um, you know, leading to every day being red. And what do you know, down 10 grand a week, which again, is not a big deal. 10, 10 negative 10 grand a week is nothing special, nothing, you know, to be worried about for me. But again, going into the new year and starting it off like that, um, I had to reflect and again, I, I sat myself down and I said, okay, why, why have I taken five gamma craps this week? Like I, I really take five gamma craps in every few months, you know? Um, so I just reset and I said, nope, let's get back to really saying picky, being patient, um, and, and sticking to what I know is going to be the best of the best trades for me, um, when they do come. And so I, 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 I think I made those adjustments pretty well. Cause we go into the next week, um, ELEV was a loser. Um, it was a setup I did like, and I, I will take time and time again, but it did turn out to be a pretty just crappy mover in general. Um, a little multi-day run here from what's 50 cents all the way up to like two bucks did gap down. And so I, I was like, okay, we're planning to overextend the gap down idea. As you can see how it worked out though, it did end up coming back and I did take a stop out for a loss. Um, and I never touched it again, right? Once it, once it did what it did and how it did it on this day, um, it kind of killed the pattern for me. And unless they were going to kind of squeeze and blow off again, then I would try to give it a second temp. But as you can see here, I never actually looked or touched at it again because it just didn't, hasn't done that yet. It just chopped its way up. And again, I would say one every 10 to 20 tickers is going to do something like this where the new, even though it's in the small cap space, the news or how it moves or the reason behind why it's moving is just more legitimate. Um, and so it's actually held its gains from 50 cents down to 30 or to $3, like just impressive, but it, it's, there are legit things that happen with, with companies in this space. It just, it's just rare. Um, but yeah, so I took a loss here. Let's look at, uh, what was it this day? The ninth, right? If we go here, the ninth here. Yeah. So again, it, it closed. Where was the close? Let's look at the actual chart here. It makes it easier. Um, yeah, like it looks like 181, 180. Um, again, got short into the gap down, cut it. I think I didn't cut it all. I cut most of it into red green and then resting the rest on the previous day's high, which I think was on the one eighties or a one ninety, um, reshorted, I re added that size and it really looked good to me. I mean, after it, you know, this lower high here and then actually looking to break down, um, it just did, it just supported itself, it put in like a little double top or double bottom, I should say. A um, little bounce back, but I thought, okay, we're going to just trade sideways and, and fade at midday or late day, which again, has happened plenty of times in many tickers. Um, it's not what happened. <laughs> we just random huge, huge spike in volume, whether it was a buyer, whether it was shorts getting squeezed, because I knew a lot of shorts were, were somewhat interested in this when I remember, at least when I remember getting short, I remember seeing a lot of comments and reading a lot of other traders with the same idea. Um, you know, everyone just got squeezed out, right? Um, unfortunately, I didn't fill all of it here. I had to take some slippage up here, uh, ultimately losing, what, 5,800? So it sucks, 
But uh, again, not a, a loss too out of the range for me. I think, and it, maybe I'm getting off topic here, but but if you remember at some point, I don't know, I've made so many videos now, I don't even remember when I say it, but like, uh, I think it was the last December recap video where a lot of attempts that I would take, I'd give second or third tries. So what turned into, or what started as a, you know, only 2K loser turned into a four or 6K loser because I gave it a third or second and third attempt. This one, you know, is this second attempt was unfortunately a much bigger loss. I think I only lost around two to three K on this attempt. So to well over double it um, into six K on the second attempt, I don't love, but there's no world where I would have seen this fail like this and not get short into this bounce. Like maybe I maybe I don't short right away here, right? On the failure. But when it bounces and then actually fails, like I should have, I definitely, there's no world where I wouldn't have been getting short for a second try here because there's so many, like nine times out of 10, this would break down here, go to a new low day, and then I would make back some money and actually come out with a profit. Um, so it's one of those things where I, I don't love that I compounded the loss. Um, maybe in a better situation, I just shouldn't have cut it here and risked it all on, on the day highs, the previous day's highs. Um, but yeah, it's just one of those trades where I, I don't like it, but I, I don't regret how I traded it. Maybe just not slippage here. Maybe it'll been a little quicker getting out lower. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things. I, I don't like it, but there's nothing. I, I accept it, right? Um, so that was that. Next trade here. This is where, yeah, this is where things get good. Uh, this is where the month starts turning around. Because again, after the here, now I'm down, you know, what, like 12 or 13 grand or so. But then we get to here. And this is where the, the momentum really shifts and starts getting going. Um, the first one is, I actually have, I had a shot, I had a picture of shot up, but let's go over GBTC first. Um, I actually, I'm not gonna talk too much about, oh, I guess I will. Um, I did make a video on this particular trade, um, on Clover's YouTube channel. I can, I can link it here, but essentially not to go into too much detail. Um, I have, I have, I have had a, a Roth IRA open. Um, a lot of traders actually like trading on their Roth IRAs if they were able to open one. Um, either before they pass the income limit or if they do a back our Roth, which is what I did um, because I was over the income limit. Either way, I wanted to put money into a Roth to actually start trading it to some degree, but not full-time trading. I, I didn't, I don't long enough and I'm not a, a, as active of a long trader to try to start a small account with an, a Roth IRA and to try to grow it. I'm just not there yet. I don't really care to do it. Um, I rather focus on what makes me the most money, which is short selling. Um, but I did, I did want to try to actually grow this thing, just not actively. And so, um, you know, for those who who've been following me long enough, enough, you know, you know, I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin fan. Uh, and I thought to myself, you know, I've always thought Bitcoin is going to continue to go higher long term. And I thought to myself, you know what? Let me, let's just buy, let's just put my money in my Roth in GBTC. I ended up buying it in this like the 16 high 15s area, right in this consolidation period at some point. I don't remember exactly what day, but I definitely got a 16 average uh, or like a 1590s. Um, and I just held. I said I'm I I'm going to keep holding until long as I feel like there's a pullback coming um, and or the sell the news ETF. Um, and that's what I did. Once the once the once the ETF came, I did sell it in like the 40s and 41 area. Um, mainly cuz again, it's not it's not a taxable event for me. It's in the Roth. And then I'm going to look to rebuy a cheaper ETF fee. So if those are in or into the e, are the Bitcoin ETFs. Um, Grayscale here is the most expensive by far, like multiple times more expensive. And so if I am going to hold it long term, or I want I want to just you know not actively trade it, but put in something I think goes is going up, which in this case for me is Bitcoin. Um, I immediately sold it, and now I plan on start accumulating again a cheaper ETF like BlackRock's I, iShares um, iBit because um, they're like five times cheaper than, than BlackRock or than, than, than Grayscale's fee. So, um, so far we actually have held up a little bit better than I thought. You know, it, it was a sell the news, but news event pretty decently. We sold off what 20% from the, from pretty much 44 down to, you know, 35 ish. Um, but again, where we go from here, I'm not sure in the short term, I think, I think it would be healthy for us to chop around, um, maybe even make a couple lower lows, maybe a couple of higher highs, but then ultimately later this year, then break out and go to new highs. If I had to have a crystal ball, um, I just don't think us going straight to new highs right now because the ETFs here, um, like a lot of people think is, is healthy. Um, uh, maybe it does and I'm wrong, but I, I, I would prefer to just let it chill for a little bit and still, again, not actively trade it, but still try to pick my spots smartly. Like I'm not trying to get the bottom, but I'm also not going to just blindly buy and, uh, and just close my eyes kind of thing. Like my Roth, I still want to grow it. I don't want to just, you know, poorly, um, manage it, if that makes sense. So. But I did make 20 grand 
All right, it was a huge 20 grand winner, uh, made over 100% easily from, you know, 16 all the way up to the 40s. Um, so that was really, really cool. So that was on this day. That was on the day, obviously, the ETF came out. Um, the next day, I ended up covering my SHOT short. Oh, whoops, wrong, wrong uh, icon there. Um, SHOT, I also did either a video on this or I think a video lesson on this. Um, but I also did a blog post, which is on Clover's blog or on, on Clover's website. I can link that in the description as well. Um, just writing about my thesis and what, what it is and how it operates and what were the, what were the, what was the true underlying reason why this stock is up. Um, and essentially in my, in my opinion, it's because they have like 10 million, 15 million warrants at like 90 something cents. And so when they did that, and actually I did, I believe I did talk about this cause I made a huge lot of, or a great, great profit on in November on this first red day. Um, and I was having a day trade short and a swing trade short, but covered both because they panicked so well. But I hadn't forgotten about the swing short idea. And so I thought if it was going to bounce back into the fives or sixes, I would have loved getting short in there, risking the highs, and then looking to cover and actually have it swing it and, and fade below this red day low, which was like, what, 270s? So in my head, I was like, I'm thinking like 250s or lower. Let's get short in the five or sixes and just swing for however long it takes. Because because once, once the crowd is gone, once the interest is gone, um, you know, the dilution is going to kick in. Um, or at least the overhypeness is going to kick in and this thing's going to fade pretty hard. So that's exactly what happened. I essentially end up getting my full size. I believe after this day, um, I didn't short as much as I wanted to in the sixes. I think I actually ended up, when I went over six, I was like, wait, let's see how high it goes and then short. And I remember it being pretty weak into the close on the 12th or on the 4th of December here um, to where I actually had to chase a little bit and get short in the low or the high fives and then adding a little bit more on this gap down into the mid five. So didn't love my average. I think my average was around like 540-ish, 550-ish because um, I did also take a start on this day before five, like the high fours. So every little every little ad I had, it was a little bit lower than I wanted. Um, but nonetheless, I, I didn't mind. I just, I didn't really care about um, you know, it would have been nice to have a better average, but I also knew what's, what's 20, 30 cent difference of an average or 40 cents of an average, um, to then capture three or four more dollars of downside kind of thing. Um, and it worked out pretty quickly. I mean, these two red days were huge to right, take it right back down near the lows. The pain in the butt part was where it actually started shopping a bit, double bottomed and then bounced. Um, however, I, I, I put this in my watch list for weeks. Um, I probably annoyed some people in Clover. Sorry, guys. But like, I was like, if this, I was, almost every day, I was like, if shot back, ever bounces back to five bucks, I would love to add. You know, I didn't really get the size I wanted either because I did have a lower entry. But now that I knew I had confirmation this would fail, I was like, now I could risk this bounce high instead of the all-time highs. Um, and I was like, you know, if we ever bounce to five, I would add. And so it, I got that perfectly. This last little high day uh, topped out at 512. I had an order at five sitting. Um, got short my full size now. And then just was a matter of just to wait time, let time play out. And it actually worked out great. And, you know, it was a little bit slower of a grind, but nonetheless, it was pretty straight down, you know, pot top, top left to bottom, right. Um, just fading. And then once we really started cracking below 250 here on the 12th here on this day, where it started going to the two thirties, I said, yep, uh, this is around where I'd like it. And uh, let's cover it now. The annoying part is the next day, some filing came out of someone accusing or maybe notifying the FDA that their product doesn't actually work, which again, surprise, like I don't, <laughs> it doesn't shock me at all. Um, maybe it does, but but someone certainly accused them of it not working. And I was like, yeah, duh. Um, <laughs> you know, sorry to be so cynical, but like, I'm, I'm going to think the same thing. Um, and so it did panic pretty much 20, 20% lower the next day. So, you know, could have, should have, would have, if I was a little more patient, made an extra few grand. But when you make 40 plus grand, I'm not going to complain about an extra four or five. Um, I made 40. That's great. Um, so one of those longer term swing ideas that I just really happy about. I mean, I just really read it well on how it ended ultimately got to where it was going to go. So that was what led to, you know, this day on the 12th, oops, on the 12th, you know, 40 plus grand. And if you look at the trade here, just to show you my covers, um, you know, covered it all in the two thirties on that day. So really, really great swing. Very, very happy about it. Um, and that again, really awesome of a week, 64 K between the two GBTC and, and shot. Um, Week three here, not much happened. Um, if I'm looking at my trades, PHUN was the main ticker I traded this week, but then this week was also the GBTC, which I'll go into into a little bit of detail once we get there. But um, PHUN right here, um, really sick run um, with 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 DWAC and fun running. We'll talk about DWAC later as well. Um, you know, with the, with the elections coming around and Trump kind of winning the primaries for some some states, this was going huge. Fun and DWAC, you know, if you're in 2021, if we go back, um, 
you know, huge, huge runs around the whole Trump mania and hype. So the fact that it's coming back a little bit, you know, makes sense why these were running. And 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 Fun had a huge, huge move, you know, gapping up to 14 cents and then running all the way up to the 40s. Um, I took a short on it and a long on it. Uh, made money on the short, lost money on the long, surprisingly, but it's because like, it was a little bit too aggressive. Um, yeah, this parabolic I made some money on. Well, let's actually go to the chart here. We can see it. Yeah, right here. Um, a little parabolic into 35 cents. Um, you can't even see it, but I did actually get earlier. Oh, no, there it is right here, this little little cut. Um, I think they're actually cut it again. I You can't even see it. I think I took two small paper cuts and then actually had my final short right here. And then obviously it failed pretty hard, covered it, you know, and it started consolidating and kind of supporting in the 20s, uh, 25, 26 area. And it actually continued higher. Um, the problem with, or the issue I have with this is that I, based on how big the volume was, after I had covered, I kind of had that gut feeling of like, this is going to go much higher. Um, unfortunately, I just didn't really listen to that. And I didn't start buying until it really broke over the highs. Um, I would have loved to have gotten short like sub 30. Um, but I didn't get long until like mid 30s. And if we actually go, I'm pretty sure I took a screenshot. Oh, there's my GBTC. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, I don't know if I have it. Do I have it saved somewhere? Um, I don't for some reason. But um, essentially, I was longing. You know, where is it here? Started longing into the mid 30s somewhere, trying to get, you know, trying to get these dips, but never really got a dip to 30. Like after I missed this dip, I was like, okay, let's start buying 33, 34. I think I started buying one more time over 35 or 36 when it really significantly was proving to hold over this, this previous high. Um, and it worked out great. You know, yeah, I, would I feel like I chased a little bit, but obviously this move significantly into 50 um, was awesome. And I remember selling some into like 45, um, like a 20% like a of my position. But I remember thinking how big the volume was. Like we were approaching like I think a billion shares in the day. Um, you know, if you if you traded some of these lower price runners that when they enter when they start to enter a billion or plus more shares of range, um, that it's big and it's usually a high indication that a, a gap up might come. The issue was and the and the underlying risk was that an offering from this company was very high, so it was kind of a high risk high reward trade where, um, you know, if they didn't offer, I thought this thing was going to gap up big and I would sell for for a, hopefully a nice profit. And again, in my eyes, I like I locked some in, I locked in some gains. My average, you know, it, it's closing at forty three. My average is like you know, call it eight to ten cents lower. Um, you know, let's give it a shot. And what do you know? Yeah, they offer. Really, really unfortunate. Totally killed it. I really think if they could have waited one more day, this thing would have been opened up fifty plus the next morning. But it is what it is. They offered. I ended up selling it all in like the thirty five to thirty range. Um, so really. I mean, actually, probably worse. I think I sold most of it, unfortunately, in the like the 29 area. Um, so thankfully, I locked in gains here that that really helped my my position because I did I did unfortunately have to give back those gains and then lost like 1400. So small long loss, but it just sucks because I was up like probably five or six grand up here. Um, not realized, but but again, with the realized and the unrealized, that's how much I was up. So to give it back was unfortunate, but again. Nine times out of 10 with this kind of volume, with this kind of intraday look and, and the odds that I thought it had to go higher the next day, I'm going to take it. I, I just am. Um, I'm not going to you know regret not taking it. Um, it just sucks that they had the offering when they did. You know, if they, even, they, even if they had it in the next morning, you know, before, what's it called, um, market open, but I was there pre-market, I probably still would have gotten out at a higher price, right? It is what it is. Small loss. Um, ultimately made a little bit of money because I made some on the parabolic. Um, but that's that. Now, how on earth and where did this 82K come from? Um, it also came from GBTC. So I went into really good detail in a video lesson for for, for Clover. But uh, essentially, what I did was with GBTC, the Roth IRA long is not the only long I had. Um, that was the early long. That was the kind of, again, if it, it was still managed, it wasn't like a long-term investment, but it was a long-term idea that like, you know what, I'm not, I'm just going to buy into my Roth and not really touch it until the ETF comes right. However long that takes like fine. There was another thesis I had, which was once the ETF is finally going to come, I want to be aggressive in being buying that and into that sell the news event. Cause I just, I just, if you were around on, what was it this day right here back in, uh, back right here. Actually, let's let me let me pull up Bitcoin for you so you actually can understand here what I'm talking about. Oh, we got to do here Bitcoin, yeah. Um if we look back and we go yeah, this day right here where it spiked from set 27k to 30k and then pulled back 
to 28k. That was on the that was on a fake PR that Bitcoin was ETF was coming and it was approved. Um, and I actually tweeted about this. Like if you go to my Twitter on this day, I literally tweeted about like, wow, like a fake a fake um, you know not true PR that the ETF was approved took it from 27 to 30k in like minutes. I'm like, imagine what was going to happen when the ETF's actually coming, right? Um, which for me was almost a sure thing. Like again, BlackRock has had like 99.9% .9 of their ETF applications get approved and they already applied for a Bitcoin ETF. So like it was, in my mind, it was a done deal, like no brainer. Um, but once that fake PR came out, I, I, I felt... I felt that rush from people like uh, on Twitter, on the sentiment. I was like, people are antsy and they're ready for this thing. Um, and so what did I do? I said, I, I said, it's coming and I have some extra money lying around. Like I'm going to buy GBTC <laughs> um, mainly because GBTC at the time was again, it was still at a discount. It was still trading below its NAV, not as much as it was earlier. Um, but, but certainly nonetheless, like still a, a 15 or 20, 10% discount. So like just more upside, um, when it finally went away, which it did. And so I bought, um, like 4k shares at 23 on this, like one of these days, right? Actually it was this day right here. Um, cause the low was 22 96. I remember trying to wait for a dip and it just dipped below 23. I bought at 23. Um, and again, the rest was history. I was like never down ever again. So such a really good entry. Um, and then also I then took another more money in my IV account that was just earning interest, um, bought it in like the 26s, 27s in here. Um, just cause I thought, I thought, all right, the Momo is here, like it's coming. Um, and I just, we just caught this sick, sick run, um, you know, well in from, from the twenties all the way into the forties for GBTC. Again, Bitcoin went from, from the thirties all the way touching nearly 50, um, 49 K specifically. And, uh, and now you might ask though, Kyle, okay, well you nailed the ETF, sell the news idea. Like, well, why didn't I sell all of this here? And frankly, in my head, I was like, okay, well, and, and, and I don't want to call it, I don't want to, if, if I was justifying it or I was trying to be smart with it. But again, for those who know, like I still think Bitcoin is going much higher longer term. And so I got caught up in, I think the greed uh, and the fact that I've already, I already had, I already had longed it for a few months and I'm like, man, if I just hold it for like another nine months, like it's going to turn into long-term gains. Like it's going to be a shorter tax bracket for me. And I was like, that's kind of sounds kind of nice, right? I'm thinking of all these, I'm, I'm counting my eggs before they hatch, right? I'm like already thinking about taxes just nine months away. Um, I'm already thinking about the fact that, you know, do I really want to sell, you know, if I save that money on taxes and I, but I, but I, and I don't sell, I'm going to pay the G, or the GBTC fee. That's more expensive. But like, honestly, like, but saving money in taxes is worth the fee. Again, I'm like making all these justifications why I should still hold on to it. And if you, <laughs> if you go back long enough in my YouTube channel and you watch my December 2022 recap, I talk about how I got sucked in to a lot of grayscale and, and trust tickers from the grayscale themselves and took some of my biggest losses in my career. Um, and the mirror image of them is scary similar. And what I mean by that is, and again, I went a lot of, I won't go into too much detail here, but same thing happened, right? Bitcoin pull, over the summer of 2021 pulled back nearly 50%. Um, GBTC went from the 55s all the way down to 20s, the mid 20s. And I said to myself, we're going to make new highs. I said, despite all the bad news, all the negative that news was coming out, we dropped to 50%. I said, we are in a bull market. We are going to come back to new highs. And I nailed, and I, and just very similar to how I nailed the entries here where I was like immediately up. I was never down. I did the same thing here. I don't, I don't know what it is. I have, I, I've had a good history and have watched Bitcoin trade enough to have really good entries when I do take it seriously. Um, and I bought it like right here. Like, like the one of the one of the last I was I started accumulating into this like four day region. I ended up getting full size on like the this last day here, and the next day Bitcoin spikes huge. GBTC gaps up to like you know again, I'm already up now four or five bucks a share, and I told myself, oh my gosh, I might never be down in this position again, right? And that's I mean that's what happened, right? We we went all the way up. We actually did, Bitcoin did go to make new highs. Unfortunately, GBTC that its net asset value discount got worse, and so it even though Bitcoin made new highs, GBTC didn't. It kind of was like a double top. Um, but again, my greed got the best of me. I was like, wow, I might never see my entry again. You know, even if we do enter a bear market, I don't think it's going to go that low. And that was the mistake I made, right? Really good on the entries, but terrible on the exit strategy. And that's most people who get caught. Like that's like, that's the, that's the perfect, um, recipe of, for greed is that like you, you get so caught up in how much you're up. Cause again, guys, I was up. Oh my God. I was up my new biggest gain. I was up three, four, probably, I think even 500 K at one point. Um, 
I just got so caught up that I didn't even think about the exit plan. And my exit plan at the time was like, I think Bitcoin's going to 100K. I got so caught up in that magnet for 100K that when we only went to like 69K for, for Bitcoin, I was like, no, no, we have so much more to go. Again, I got so sucked up in my, in my, own, in my own motions that I just watched it bleed and go all the way back down. Um, and again, I talk about that in there, recap more detail and why I ended up puking it down. I mean, it looks in hindsight, it's terrible. I, pu I puked it literally at the lows here, like at sub 10. The good part is though, is that I immediately took that money I had left in this position and just bought Bitcoin directly at 17K. So I'm don't, don't, don't boohoo poor, poor you, Kyle. Like I'm, I'm up just fine. I, I, I nailed, um, you know, getting into Bitcoin at near the lows, which is great. Um, but then you add it, but, but, but take that in a grain of salt. Like I already have enough actual Bitcoin exposure. The fact that I bought more GBTC solely for this run, it should have stayed for that run. Um, and so once I kind of came to that realization, like, what am I doing? Like trying to justify taxes and all this BS, like you're getting, I, I'm, I'm, I'm falling into my bad habit, which was I got sucked in to the GBTC idea when really I only got in because it was going to get away from the GBTC idea that GBTC wasn't going to be the only ETF like stock that I had to buy if I was going to buy one. Right. Um, and so once I came to that epiphany, I snapped myself out of it and I said, you know, it easily could come back down to my entry. Like, like if you've seen Bitcoin trade enough, if you watched it, like Bitcoin could be down 30, 40% overnight. One negative news outlet could, could, could drop something or something bad could happen. You know, China bans it again, like it did back here, right? When it dropped 50%, like, like Bitcoin could be down like that. And if it does that, I'm going to give it back all the gains that I have away. It's going to go back into the twenties area where my entries are. And I'm going to be like, well, what taxes I'm down. Like, I'm already again. I'm already counting the realize before it's hatched, and so I um, my eggs before they hatch, and so like I I snapped out of it. I said, nope, get me out. Um, unfortunately, yes, it was dollars a share lower, so I, I probably could have made twenty or thirty grand more had I just sold it with my IRA in the forties. Um, I ended up selling in like the the thirty sixes, um, and yes, is it higher now? So sure, you know maybe I overreacted. But uh, I, I just, it just would, still wouldn't surprise me. I just, like I said earlier, I just still think we need a kind of a consolidated period. I don't think, I think it would be unhealthy for us to just re immediately rip right back higher. Um, I would love a multi-month period. And over those multi-month periods, you know, another 10, 20, 30% pullback into the 30s here at the minimum would not shock me. Um, and again, does it have to happen? Absolutely not. Um, does it mean if it doesn't happen that, oh, darn it, Kyle, I should have, I should have kept on to my positions? No. Again, I bought them for a trade. So that's what they need to be, a trade. Um, not this falling in love with this position because I'm up so much so quickly. Because again, if, if for those who have traded long enough, like if you, when you're, when you enter a position, you are immediately up. Like, and you're, and you get, and you're so up right away that you like will never be down again. At least in hindsight, when you look back, like, oh, like it just, it's such one, it's, it's one of those sick, sick feelings. And so, but the problem is it's so, it feels so good. You get caught up in, at least I do. Um, and so I'm glad I sold it. I, I feel much more clear headed. I can read it much more accurately. I have no, I have no FOMO that it's back up. Um, I, I think we're going to consolidate very healthy for a long time. And again, from the trading perspective, if we do consolidate not long enough, and I want to like try to rebuy a breakout or actually trade it. Um, you know, 50 K or 49 K is a really solid level to be watching. Um, so that's just something to, to, to keep in mind, um, at least for me and uh, that I want to keep track of going forward. But again, I just love that I have a clear headed. I love that I just locked it in. Um, and that's, you know, long story short, long explanation short. That's kind of what, where this came from. Um, anyways, so let's have go, we go last couple of weeks here. Um, this last week, what on earth did I do? Fannie Mae and DWAC, DWAC, um, both, both sick, sick runs. Um, why don't I have Fannie Mae up? Let's pull Fannie Mae up. I want to go over that one first. Um, Sick, sick breakout, sick move in the OTC world for those who have been dreading and, and starving for an OTC runner to come back. Believe me, I'm one of them. I would love OTCs to come back more often, but it's just the market we're in. But Fannie Mae here um, has had a few sick breakouts in the last year, right? We had the first breakout over like 50 cents-ish, went all the way up to 90. The next breakout over 90, went all the way up to 115-ish. Um, and I was watching, and a lot of people in Clover were watching, me and me and Dom specifically had it on our watch list almost every day, um, just keep, like, keep tabs on it, because the moment this thing gets peaks or perks back over one, holds over one, and starts approaching that 115 level, this has had a history of having really, really good breakouts, and so that's exactly what I did. Um, I remember starting, once once it kind of held, it went sub one, and then held this 93 area, this last like dip, and then this volume started coming in and started getting much stronger. I remember starting in at like 108, 107-ish. Um, would have loved an entry closer to one, 
but I, I wanted to really wait for some kind of confirmation. This was the first sign of that, you know, that really strong comeback coming. And so I started in there, um, then actually added full size on the breakout and then ended up selling the next day at like the one thirties. Unfortunately, I thought it was going to have two days. Like, again, if you looked at the previous history here, it'll break out. And then the second day has a good run. It'll, this one didn't break out, but it has a good strong first day and then a second strong day. So essentially it had two days in a row of really strong, strong moving uh, moves. And so after this day one, or yeah, day one of the breakout, I'm like, okay, we're going to have a second day. Fortunately, we didn't, we did go red. So I did sell my position. So it didn't make as much as I thought I could, but nonetheless still made like 11 or 12 grand. I made like, um, like eight K in my E-Trade account. And then I actually bought it at my center point account just cause to have more money on the table. Um, oh, here's my GBTC me selling that day. Yeah. On this little, this little bounce back. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then Fannie Mae here. So God, this chart's so ugly in the intraday, but the day looks way better. <laughs> this was the breakout day. I know it looks very not attractive because it's just such a slow mover, but um, was buying all up in the one 115 area, um, added a little bit like 119 it looks like, um, added a little bit more 136 because again, I think, I'm thinking the next day it's going to go 150, 160, 170. Um, and then the next day I ended up selling it right out the open here when it went red. Unfortunately, got like, like I think I sold out like 130. Kind of sucks because, again, a 136, six cents on, I had like, I don't know, not 100,000 shares, but I had like 90K shares between both accounts. Like, it's a lot of money. So I did give some back, unfortunately, but, and it did come back, but th that, th this is not the play I was looking for. Um, if I'm looking for a second day, I'm looking for a strong gap up or at least a red green hold and then go higher, not a risk all my profits to have it going back down to break even to then just see it grind back to new highs, right? That's not how I play longs. That's not how I play breakouts. And so, um, happy what I, what I made on it. You know, I did make over 10 gray or 10, 11 K on the total overall play of this. Um, just had it gone one more day strongly. I mean, it would have been a big, big winner, but anyway, still, a, still a great breakout. Very happy. Um, it happened. And again, I still think, you know, the longer, I don't, I don't think it's going to break out, but the longer Fannie Mae hangs out up here, um, I can't, I can't deny, you know, me getting interested. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens in the next few months. Hopefully it takes that long. I, I really wouldn't like it to just keep going and going and going. I would love a longer period, maybe like something like this. Um, just be more, it would be more healthy for it if it was going to actually break out again. Um, after this was DWAC. Um, so again, I talked about fun DWAC. I also traded a little bit. Um, unfortunately didn't actually come up out much profitable on this sadly. Um, but am happy with how I traded on this day. Um, to some degree. Um, this day, what was it? The 23rd, let's go there. 23rd was tough because again, I, I think everyone, not everyone, but most people agreed with me that this was a sell news idea. The problem is it was a little bit tricky and the sell news really didn't happen until after the primary New Hampshire primary happened. And the reason why I say it's tricky is because I've seen some sell news events happen the day of. So like if there's a sell news event where the event is happening overnight, some people will sell and it will, it will be the sell news event before the the day before the event, simply because people don't want to hold through the event, right? They don't want the uncertainty. They want to just you know sell it off and get rid of their position before the event starts. Has that's what kind of happened, right? Like out the out the in, in the morning. Um, I think the previous close was like somewhere in like fifty fifty one ish area. Um, it did fade, right? And I was up like ten k at the lows here at forty bucks. Um, and again, we're down from fifty to forty, like a full twenty percent. You know. I typically don't think most red days that I short when they're down 20% that they come back. They just don't. Um, most don't. And given this sell the news idea, given that I thought, okay, people aren't, might not want to hold into after hours, into overnight, because that's when the primary vote is actually happening. Um, so for being this first half an hour, I was like, okay, my thesis is right. Um, unfortunately, it didn't stay right. Um, you know, bounced back pretty strongly, consolidated a long time. I thought, okay, well, we're going to roll over. Like, I'm going to try, I'm not going to just, you know, um, impulsively get on my position. Let's stick to the plan and see if it rolls back over, back down to lows. Excuse me. Um, didn't do that, right? Bunch of volume came in, started squeezing. I cut it. And again, from when I was up 10 K here, I ended up taking like an eight K loss, cutting it over the highs. So not fun. Um, eight K is a little bit bigger, but also on a red day and a daily chart like DWAC, um, I am fully capable and able and willing to risk that much. So I, I'm not upset that I lost that much. Um, I'm just a little bit annoyed that again, going down 20% to then being up 10% plus on, on that kind of a squeeze, um, isn't really 
good to, it's not a good feeling. Um, you know, but again, nine times out of 10, 10 out of 10, I'm going to keep taking that trade the same way it did. It's just unfortunate that it came back like it did. Um, however, the next day, Traded it well, but not as well as I wanted to. And for those who, I think actually we actually live streamed this trade because it was on a Wednesday. Um, it gapped down, right? So, so the new sell news event happened, gaps down. Um, red green is now like again at fifty one ish, whatever fifty, and we're gapping down to forty four. I hate gap downs, guys. I've, I've said this time and time again. I'll always say this. I hate the idea of having to get short in this area, risking the red green. And so I try to be fancy of you know, getting short and risking any one of these highs when they happened, right? And so I remember getting, remember getting short again. I remember taking a small loss on the on this front side here. Remember getting short again up in here. I'm risking this high, thinking it was going to roll over. It doesn't, so I cut it. I take two losses between the between the front of this and the back of this. Um, lost like 8K, like another 8K. So I'm like, great. Now I'm down 16K on this thing. Um, not fun. That's, this sucks. This is holding a way better than I expected. This should not have come back. And what do you know? It holds red green. I've kind of already not exhausted myself, but I kind of threw on the towel of like I've already lost 16k to 8k in two days in a row. Like the last thing I want to do is get short again and have this squeeze me one more time. Um, until I snapped out of it and I saw it fade right back down into the morning range, and I hate that I had to see it come back down here to 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 realize this because the thesis was the same all along. Had I not had I not over maybe exhausted myself in the morning here and just waited for an entry towards red green, like this was the this like all not even this this spike. This whole area like 46 and above is a great spot to get short versus red green. Way better than down here in the 43s and 44s. Um and so I've had I had I if I could have done this trade all over again, I would have 100% been more patient and waited for this move and to get short into this move risking red green or, or even somewhere, you know, up in this consolidation period, like these, these, this resistance now, because when you look at like a daily chart, when it was happening, I was like, this has so much more downside, right? The sell the news has happened. You just need to give it a little bit of time for the reality to set in. And so I ended up did, I, once I snapped out of it, I did end up reshorting in this like 44 to 45 push, um, ended up like a 40, I think 44 little high 43s average. Um, and it worked out great. Like the, it was a late day fade kind of breakdown. Um, I believe I covered a little bit, you know, sub 38. Remember adding it back into this 40 now, uh, and then held overnight. I said this thing's gonna easily go mid 30s or lower. Um, I, I my my first thesis has been well proven right. It just took a little bit of time and, and better management to, to to have it see play out. Um, and so what do you know? The next day it spikes um, again. Tops at uh, stock gets stopped out at that like 40 resistance. And then fades, and then I cover it all. I think I covered it all in like the 34, 33s. Um, missed this last push to 32, but that's okay. And made all made all of his AK back, and then some. So uh, over the pre over the entire course of this ticker, um, I'm maybe up a few grand, a couple of grand at most. It, it's unfortunate because had I just tr one uh, taking this AK loss on this day again, I don't regret. But playing this gap down day a little bit smarter. Um, and realizing what it was before it was too late. I mean, I, again, I, I, I got in, but I didn't get in too late, but I got in later, right? Like to have a 43 average when I could have had a 46 and up average if I just, you know, kept my head in the game of like, this is holding red, like, duh, Kyle, like pay attention. Um, would have been a lot bigger, right? But it is what it is. Um, we are still holding up pretty well here. So maybe we do a second run or maybe we break down. Who knows? I'm still kind of eyeing it to see where it goes from here. Um, but yeah, that's that. That's that week, right? Yeah. Yeah, here. Um, still a great week, right? Um, yeah, because I think my Fannie Mae gain covered the losses on one of these days, and then I made, again, like 10K plus or, or on the day. I'd actually, you know, whatever it's called. Uh, um, I lose my train of thought. This is a long video. <laughs> um, 10K plus on the DWAC day when I actually failed. Like I made, I made, I made like 20K because I made the 8K back and then another like 11K on top of that. So pretty sweet, sweet week. Um, and then the last week here, nothing really special besides the 31st, which actually I'm not even going to go into that much because you guys literally have this video live. Um, RVSN here, we did a live trading session um, streaming through Clover's channel, and uh, and I and I nailed it, guys. Like I, I couldn't be happier in how I traded it um, or how I reacted to how it moved. Um, and this whole sell, like this whole thing right here, you, it's on camera. Um, you know, I'll, I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch that recap of, of us live trading, me, Dom, and Huddy. Um, they didn't take it, but I did. I think Dom maybe took small size. I forget what, what he did with it, but uh, but I nailed this thing. I mean, this was, I ended up making um, like 11K. 
Um, I had one small piece left after this panic to see if it went a little bit lower. I ended up covering the last piece as it started bouncing back more strongly here into the 12s. Um, so it gave a little bit back, but I, I had covered like five sixths or like 80% plus of, of my position into this panic. Um, so again, locked in like 11K that day. I think it was the only trade I took. Yeah, 11,400 ish. Um, close out the month, um, you know, up over 157 grand. Now, borrowing fees were a little bit high, mainly because shot interest was not cheap. I'm also swinging a few other tickers that I will talk about once I close them out. Um, their interest is not cheap. So I did unfortunately have to add those in, which is a little bit higher than I want, but it's what you get for, for swing shorting some things. And then we're already having a good start to February with, with a 9k winner on Friday. So, um, without further ado, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, again, like I said, very happy with how January starts again, January and February are typically and historically my best months of the year. So, um, I don't have high expectations for February, but I, I feel good going into February with how it'll turn out. We'll see. Again, I could be stupid and give back gains like any month or any trader can do. Um, so we're going to stay on my my tip top shape like I have the last, you know, after I cut myself out the first week and really um, executed the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I will see you guys at the end of February with the February recap. Peace, everybody. Later. Actually, Actually, <laughs> this is, we're going to keep this in. We're not going to edit this out because um, I actually don't ever, ever, ever edit any of this. Um, February's recap might be a little late because we do have Clover. It does have a boot camp March, the beginning of March, like this weekend of March, March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, and 5th. Um, I'm flying out there on the Thursday or Friday. And so that's like, again, right when I would make the February recap. So maybe, maybe I make my February recap a little bit early on this week. Um, or I'm going to end up making it later, like the second, this second to into third week of March. Um, but yeah, it's in New York city. So if you haven't bought a ticket and you want to see, you know, speakers from me, ducks, laptop, legend, Huddy, Jack, Kellogg, Dom, um, we will be there in March, New York city that day. So feel free to, uh, full, to join that. I'll put a link in the description as well. If you want to get into that. Um, but yeah, th I'll be doing that that weekend and I won't have time to making a video. So maybe I'll do it early or I'll do it late. But anyways, um, now we're going to end the video. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Uh, peace out. Later.